We are going to look at now the preparation of an organomagnesium compound, also known as a Grignard reagent. This mechanism is basically exactly the same as the formation of the organolithium complex. The only difference here is the metal that you are using. You're using magnesium in this case instead of lithium. And because you are using magnesium, there is a slight difference in the degree of ionic character associated with the magnesium carbon bond in the end. Magnesium has an electronegativity of 1.2, whereas lithium had an electronegativity of 1.0. So magnesium and carbon do share electrons a little bit better than carbon and lithium do. And for that reason, the Grignard reagents are slightly less reactive than the organolithium reagents but just barely. They're pretty much the same. So again, you would start off with an alkyl halide. And the alkyl halide that you start out with, again, can be primary, secondary, or tertiary. It doesn't matter. I'm going to use the same one that I used for the lithium. The only difference is the metal that you find on top of your arrow. This time you're going to use magnesium. And again, you would need to use a solvent that does not have an acidic proton. That's very important because we're producing a very strong base during the course of this reaction. So, as we saw in the last one, magnesium is a metal. The difference between magnesium and lithium is that magnesium has two electrons in its valence shell. It still wants to get both, rid of both of them so that it can look more like a noble gas. So, we are going to do that by giving electrons to the alkyl halide. Okay, so here's our alkyl halide that I've decided that we are going to use. And one of these electrons will be given to it. Now, there really isn't a place for this electron. It doesn't really want it, but we are still going to give the electron to this complex. So at this point, we have Mg plus. It's lost one of its electrons. Okay. And then we have our corresponding anion. And there really is not a place for this extra electron. So this complex is extremely unstable. And as a result of that, it breaks apart quite quickly. And it will do so by a homolytic bond cleavage of the carbon-bromine bond. And as this bond breaks apart, bromine being the more electronegative of those two elements will take the extra electron that is available. Oops. Now, this radical that we have produced, you're not going to see any shifts or anything occur, but it, it is unstable, and it does need to stabilize itself. And we still have our bromide, and we have Mg plus at this point as well. So instead of bringing in another lithium, like we did before, you use the same magnesium. And it will be an electron donor to this radical. These two will come together. Now, in your book, the way you're going to see this drawn is the following way. This is how you're going to see it in your book. But this is really equivalent to having a carbanion, a bromide anion, and an Mg2 plus cation. Notice you do have three ions here. But overall, their charges do come out to be zero. So this one over here on the left, this is what you see written in your book. But be aware, it's not really a covalent bond. It isn't. What it really is are a bunch of ions associated with each other because this is ionic. You have metal and nonmetal. And one of these, this one right here, the carbon ion, is the conjugate base of a very weak acid. So these, these are very, very strong bases. And as a result of that, if there are any acidic protons anywhere, they will take the proton. 